Hi everybody. Welcome to, oh, I don't even know what day it is today, Tuesday, um, the live stream. And um, thanks for joining me. We've got a very special guest today, Jojo out of Birmingham, England. And she carves spoons. A lot of she does a lot of these uh, the green woodworking shows. Uh, she was actually um, supposed to be coming to the states next month to do a lot of shows around, but um, I'm hoping that's still going to happen. I know she's hoping so, but I'm not quite sure what's happening with that. But um, anyway, just want to make a quick test here, see if sound is working. Everything working good. Hello from Michigan. Hi, Bob. Kramer, Eastern Washington checking in until my boss tells me otherwise. Oh my goodness, don't get fired over this. <laughs> you can always watch it later. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you miss, if you do miss the live streams, um, you can always watch it later. Um, we're recording it and we're going to try to get this one up on YouTube, either my channel or JoJo's. Um, and also if you have, um, if you want to check out some of her work on uh, YouTube, uh, there's a lot of really fun, fun techniques that she shows. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, right at the very beginning of the chat, I gave um, Jojo's um, website and also Instagram address. So if you want to just check that out. Uh, let's see here. We've got um, Richmond, Virginia, Michigan. Hi from Connecticut, where the wind never stops. I'll tell you what, every single time we get on live stream, Connecticut is having something crazy happening. All right, sound is okay, good. Rachel from UK, welcome Rachel. All right, and let's see, hi from New York. Chris, hello from London, British Columbia. Well, thank you again for joining me. Um, again, we have Jojo out of Bir Birmingham, England, and she is going to be joining us. And it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, um, completely different techniques than I use. And I'm going to do a disclaimer right up front. <laughs> Don't try this at home. You might want to have your Kevlar gloves on <laughs> because, uh, yeah, um, be very careful. Um, she's going to use some very interesting tools things that I have never seen. Um, I've seen people carving uh, spoons with axes and whittling knives and all sorts of things, but this is going to be very interesting. So, all right, so we've got uh, Ontario, Canada. All right, well, I'm not going to take up any more time. I'm going to bring Jojo on here. Um, let me just see. We're going to have to do a little bit of sound test to make sure it, everything is working. So let me get out of the way here and shrink me down and let's see okay are you oops hold on a second um let's bring you sound all right you are there hello jojo <laughs> it's going it's going great well let me just uh, hold on a second let's just see um if you want to just uh Introduce yourself. We're going to do a little bit of sound testing. Um, just tell a little bit about yourself and we'll make sure that it all sounds good if I do have to do some adjusting. So welcome. Kind of green woodwork related stuff. Um, uh, so clogs, and I do a lot of teaching as well, which is what I had been hoping to do in the States uh, in not too, in quite a short amount of time, actually. Uh, hope It should have been, yeah, June, July, but quite disappointed that quite a few of those uh, have been cancelled. But obviously, you know, uh, it is what it is. We've got to keep ourselves safe right now. Um, yeah. So I'm going to be carving a spoon tonight. Well, I'll get uh, using this piece. It looks it looks like everything. I can't hear Skype audio. Hold on a second. Um, hold on. Just want to do a little bit of test. No sound. Better now. Good now. Okay. I think. Uh, okay now. Maybe we can. Mm, I one mm -hmm. one person type to Alba. Um, what uh. Can ever can everybody hear? Just want to do some testing because um. 
It was turned off for a second. Do I need to? Okay. All right. Everything good so far. <laughs> so far, good. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think I think we're good. And is it is it clear? Okay, good. All right. Well, I am going to um, I'm going to let you do this now. How we normally do this with guests is if there's any questions, oh. type them in. And I'm not going to try to really interrupt Jojo while she's really in the middle of explaining something. Um, so easy to go off track, but um, it's so when it's a comfortable time to interject some questions um we'll we'll throw those in but um uh ask anything you want and i'm gonna get my mm -hmm. face out of there so jojo you have you have the stage <laughs> brilliant thank you um yeah well uh i'm gonna be carving a spoon tonight um I have this nice piece of wood and this is my stock knife uh, wow like, yeah, so it's kind of like, um, I see it as, it, well, it's, it's a traditional clock making tool. Uh, they were traditionally used for making clocks. The English style of clock, here's one I made earlier, uh, oh. which has the kind of leather top uh, and the wooden sole. So I carved the wooden soles with them. Um, but I mean, you'll, you'll see how it works. It's kind of, I feel like I get, all of the power of say an axe or even more so um but kind of the control and the finish maybe of a draw knife or something like that um so it's a really cool tool um so i'm going to be making a spoon i have a piece of sycamore here uh english sycamore which is i believe a maple maybe a soft maple okay uh for you guys Acer Pseudo Platinus. And that's just going right down the grain, right? It's just basically stripping right straight down the grain? Yeah. I can just cut, and you can see those really big shavings that just come straight off. Um, uh, and, and because it's got this really big long handle, then I've got just all of this leverage um, <laughs> that kind of gives me a tremendous amount of power. Looks like a giant straight razor. <laughs> <laughs> and you, I mean, you can see how dangerous this would be, you know? This yeah. Like a, uh, no. Uh, scarily easily. Um, so I'm starting just by kind of dressing my piece here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was kind of slightly wedge shaped to start with um, and I've kind of taken this corner off here and I'm going to take a corner off the other side as well, uh, off the top surface, just a little bit, just to, so this is just evening it up. So when I'm working then the kind of sooner I can get the piece symmetrical, then the kind of easier it is to make it symmetrical all the way through. Um, so I'll just gently dress my surfaces here. I love I love the word the word gently with that massive tool. <laughs> yeah, see, that's one of the lovely things about it. You know, you can take an enormous amount of material off, but you can also be incredibly delicate um, and do really fine finishing cuts. So I'm just looking at this piece. Um, uh, sideways on, and I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's actually got a tiny little curve this way. It's like really subtle uh -huh. in this surface here, but it's not perfectly flat. Um, now this isn't isn't a problem. I'm going to kind of use that because um, you know my final finished spoon. Then I'm going to want a bit of a curve. Right. Uh, so I'm going to take advantage of this and use that as the top of my spoon. Um, I'm also having a look and seeing which end I'm going to work from. This is my nicer end, so I'll work from here. This is going to be my bowl. Down here will be my handle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start working down towards the handle end. Uh, basically, oh, look at that. That just came off, you know. That's, that, that's it's barely any pressure with the hand. We'll take off these really big, big wood chips. 
So my whole technique is kind of um, based on trying to make life easy for myself. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm not a massively strong person. Um, it, uh, and, and I started learning spoon carving uh, from my dad when I was a, a kid. Uh, so I was never massively strong. But I'll try and make each step easier from the next. Mm -hmm. So I start by taking these sides off because these are like nice narrow surfaces. And now I'm going to work on the back. Previously, this was a really big wide surface. Right. And to take that off would be more energy, particularly if you're using an axe. Not so much with this. But if you're using an axe, then that would be quite a large surface to take off. All at once. Um, now down the back of the handle here, kind of the same sort of cut. It's actually I'm doing it in two surfaces here. And so here then, this is going to be kind of where the shoulders of my bottle are going to be. If I just have a spoon, have a side here. Um, yeah, there's one that's just kind of similar. So, so these, these shoulders here are going to be here, and this is actually just starting to form the shape uh, here and here. And I don't know if you can see, but this has kind of got a set of facets yes. running down the back of the handle there. Uh -huh. And so that's what I'm starting to put in here by putting that in two places. Uh, this is the start of my handle Now, So that's all I'm going to do to the handle for now. Now I'm going to come round onto the bowl end. Now, if uh, I was carving this with an axe, at this point I'd take the back surfaces off first. And then I take the corners off because this is quite a large surface to try and cut a curve through accurately with an axe. Um, but with stock knife, this is going to be really easy. Okay. And, and you're calling that a stop knife? Yes. Okay. That's a. Um, it's a stock knife, but there's a, there's three stock knives, and this one's kind of subcategory will be a blocker, um, which is the kind of straight one. Can you can you explain? You mentioned to me before that when you've got that um, when when that's a brand new piece, it's quite yeah. a lot larger. That is the, how how old do you think that is? Yeah, so this will be like over a hundred years old. Um, wow. um, it's a, it's an antique, um, and they're all they're, they're traditional clock making tools. And most of the ones you find in the UK were all made by one family, the, the Carters. Um, and uh, they're quite distinctive. And you, if you look at a brand new one, then this edge here would originally have come down so it was in line with the bottom of this hook here. Uh -huh. wow. uh, so when you cut down here, then the blade would come straight down and kind of meet the block. And if, I, you can see my... Um, my uh, bench that I've got it attached to, I've actually set it down a little, the, the bottom of the hook, which kind of uh, just helps me get a bit closer down, because I want to be able to cut all the way down. Uh, and, you know, this is a bit... Uh, wow. You can imagine when this was original. Yeah, yeah. And that way down. But also, when the original ones are a lot heavier, mm -hmm. um, and it takes a lot of a lot of power to to pull one of those around. Um, so I'm going to be cutting this curve around the front here, um, and I'm coming over to this side here because I can get closer. I can, like I was saying, I can get right down to the bottom of the block, um, but by using the bit that's closest to the the pivot point here. So so the closer up I get to here, mm -hmm. and the more power. Have. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to come straight down there. Yeah, cutting a nice curve 
So let me ask you this. When you travel to the U.S., you don't put that in your luggage, do you? Uh, I have done, yet. <laughs> have you? <laughs> uh, that's got to be an interesting thing for them to discover. <laughs> Certainly not carry-on, though. No, no. No, and it takes quite a special uh, size of bag as well. <laughs> I bet. It doesn't fit in your average suitcase. <laughs> Got to put a big note on that. Yeah, it's always in the place. Um, so you see I've got a lot of kind of getting kind of more spoony down here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back now to the back of the bowl. Because uh, obviously this is still way too thick. I'm going to thin this down. And so you can see this is taking just making leaving really smooth cuts. Um, so although this is kind of my roughing out stage, whereas if I was using an axe, then I'd be left with sort of quite a choppy, messy surface. Mm -hmm. uh, then this, the the stock knife leaves that that really really smooth, silky smooth finish. <laughs> Nice. And so you can see sideways on, I'm getting this little curve across the back. Um, I always do the front edge here before I come in here, because if I take too much off one side, and then I have to take a bit more off the other side to make, even it up, and then maybe a bit more off the other side, uh, right. <laughs> depending on how wrong it goes. <laughs> it's like cutting, your um, own, like cutting your own hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do one side or the other, and then suddenly... You have to shave your whole head. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jojo, there's a real quick question here. Um, would like to know how often she has to resharpen that stock knife and what the procedure is. Do you use diamond files? Uh, yeah, so it's, um, it holds an edge pretty well. Um, I can, you can always do more work with it, sharpen it more often. So it's kind of, you know, it's that thing, do you tickle it up little and often? Or do you leave it for ages and then do a big sharpen? Um, so if I'm working with it a lot, so when I'm making clogs, then I'll sharpen it up every day. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's just a kind of a little tickle. Um, and I've got, so, and for that, then I've got um, some little water stones, um, just like little, this sort of size slip stone. Okay. Uh, in a, I've got a 1,000 and a 5,000 grit for that. Um, and sometimes it just takes a little a touch over with the 5,000 and then a bit of honing compound on a bit of board just to polish it up. Um, if it is a bit more, if it needs a bit more, then I do have some little diamonds as well. And obviously I'm not going to pick this up and then move this over the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, hmm. Um, probably have something, but it's so, kind of, um, I've got my little stone and uh, I'll pick it up like this mm -hmm. and I'll just kind of make this sort of motion. And so the, the sharpness of that, if you, if you touch it, it's not the type, like a, a carving chisel that's going to shave hair. It's, it's not yeah, quite that sharp. It, 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 I think it, it pretty much is. So it's not, so the difference is it's not dead. Uh, whereas your carving chisel, you'd have that dead flat. Yeah, yeah. Um, this it has just a touch, a soft convex to it. Oh, okay. Um, and that's because it's got to cut through a concave curve. Um, uh, and so you see this bevel here. If that was dead flat, I'd never cut through a concave with it. Right. Um, uh, whereas it's a, just got a touch of convex. But but yeah yeah, it's it's shaving sharp. It's as sharp as my straight eyes. Um, although it might be a little unwieldy to shave with. Uh, I can't say I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to cut in at the neck next. And this is the bit that took me the longest to get worked out with the stock knife. Um, I've kind of got to do a kind of series of cuts here. Whereas the axe naturally does a series of cuts. Um, 
the stock knife, if you just kind of try and stick it straight in and come straight across for that cut, then you get stuck. So I have to do a couple of cuts. So how long um, did it take you to master the tool? Uh, oh, I don't know. I think I'm still working on it, really. Still <laughs> um, but, I mean, I've probably been using it for, five, I don't know, five or six years, maybe. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Uh, maybe four or five. Um, and, you know, within that, I think, the first, I guess, um, not every day, but there were weeks when it was every day. And I guess for the first six months to a, to a year, it felt awkward and unsafe. <laughs> um, and and I, I also, um, so when I learned the clock making, then um, I, I spent a lot of time one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, this guy, Jeremy, who taught me, um, who's obviously, you know, he's been doing it for God knows how many years. Mm. And, you know, when I was learning, then he'd, he'd stand over me. Uh, and for the first kind of couple of weeks, it was like, uh, <laughs> that would be a pretty daunting machine to use. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but also, you know, just uh, just sim simple things you think you, uh, the, the kind of safety stuff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you think, it, you think it should be pretty simple, but um, you uh, you just need somebody stood there to remind you constantly of what not to do, um, really, to keep you safe. Um, so, looking pretty spoon-like now. Looks like a spoon. Um, got the back. The back's pretty much finished, mm -hmm. at this stage at least. Pretty much finished here. We're just going to do a bit on the top surface now. Because uh, this is still pretty flat, and I don't want a flat spoon. Mm -hmm. um, now this is where the stock knife really comes into its own. Um, because usually, uh, uh, with a, an axe, then you have the problem that you want to cut down this surface, and then back this way, mm -hmm. but you don't want to hold your axe up like this, an axe down here, because you're very close to your hand and it's very wobbly. Yeah. So you end up doing all this awkward stuff over on its, holding it over on its side. Um, but with this, um, I can just prop it up on its end and put it straight down here. So the, um, there's another question while you're doing that. Um, one question is, how long does it take you to make the clogs? Uh, uh, that's a kind of how long to be string sort of question, really. Um, so if everything goes right on them, and I don't have to take them, and they fit first time, so I don't have to take them apart and uh, change them and uh, uh, put them back together again, mm -hmm. um, which happens quite a bit, um, then it's probably, it's probably kind of two full days work. Okay. Although it won't be uh, back to back because obviously working with green wood, then I rough carve everything green. Um, and then with the clogs, it's kind of quite a slow drying process. Because uh, it's, you know, if you look at this, that's two inches of wood there. Yeah. Um, and if you dry that quickly, it's just going to split. Um, so a kind of slow, kind of minimum six week drying period. Um, and then a test will kind of try them on. Uh, and then there'll be some adjustments to make. Um, that's a big, yeah. that's a big shoe. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, actually, it's actually not that small. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, that foreshortening, uh, like size 27 shoe. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, here, here, here's a question why sycamore particularly um and are there any woods that would be unsafe uh, to use with food now obviously the shoes not an issue but <laughs> for the spoon yeah <laughs> The uh, sycamore, because that's what I've got at the minute. Uh, we have a, a friend who has a friend who's a tree surgeon who had cut down a sycamore tree. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's also, it's a nice, it's kind of hard, but not too hard, um, which is nice. Um, woods that I would avoid are yew. Uh, yew has a lot of toxins that are in the wood. Um, most other toxic trees, then, there's a lot of the, the dust of most trees is toxic. Um, but also, even with you, then you meet people and they say, oh, well, I've got a yew bowl and I've eaten off of it for 20 years and I'm fine. Right. Um, so it's kind of a personal thing, you know. I choose not to. Um, uh, I think it's always good to kind of just do a little bit of research for yourself and work out where your own comfort boundaries are, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, most native hardwoods in the UK are, are totally fine. Uh, sycamore particularly is is really quite uh, supposed to have antibacterial properties. Mm -hmm. um, they used to use it for, for in the milk industry. Um, I just realised that the end of my handle is a little thick. Okay. Uh, and at the end of my bowl. So I'm just going to take a little bit more off this for the stock knife. Um, and then I'm going to go on to my smaller tools. So if you've got any more questions about the stock knife while well, I've got it out, then... Uh, um, I just have a quick question. When I, I, Maybe you've answered this, but when did you actually have that wood cut? How, how green is it? Uh, I think we've had it... We got it before the lockdown started, so it's at least two, two months, maybe three. Okay, so definitely uh, not dried at all. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's still got moisture in it. It's not super sopping wet, mm -hmm. um, but it's not dry either. Um, and it's been kind of left in the log, so it's kind of got the moisture in there. And then when I've split it up, you know, put it in a plastic bag. Right. right. Um, so keep as much moisture in it as possible. Um, and yeah, so that's that's about as much as I do for the. Uh, that's neat, just as it is. I like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's nice. I really like the big surfaces at this point. Yeah, yeah, you could actually use that just as it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going like, to move things around a little bit now. So, okay. well, just... Betty, hey, hang on while she moves the. <laughs> so, you might want to close your eyes for 30 seconds or so while we don't, uh, so we don't get seasick. <laughs> Uh, here we go. And I'm not sure how it's going to be best for you to see what I'm doing here. So just yell if you can't see. Um, this is my workshop, by the way. Uh, we haven't done anything in it for, haven't had to have people here for quite a while. So please excuse the mess. <laughs> it's uh, a used workshop. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Take a look at all of this wood chip. Oh, I love it. Keep your feet warm in the winter. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm just going to start to carve this down. I have a Mora 106, uh, which is... Uh, the best knife for this sort of carving, in my opinion. Uh, and also the kind of one of the cheapest and most readily available. So if anybody's thinking about getting spoon carving, then get one of these. It seems, um, just looking at it, it seems excessive in the size. <laughs> Does it need to be that big? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I do have very small hands as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like the shoe. <laughs> I think it's a, I'm not sure. I think it's maybe... Uh, I'm really bad at... I think it's maybe just short of three inch. Okay. Probably two and a half. Uh, I don't really know. See, I don't um, I don't use knives, so I don't know anything about that. <laughs> but... Yeah. 
Um, well, see, the, the good thing about a, a long blade is when I come to do these sorts of big cuts, mm -hmm. you see, I can get that kind of slicing action. Oh, yeah. And I can kind of hold. And that's where you really miss it if you've got a, a short blade. Right. You kind of can't get really big cuts. Um, how am I looking, by the way? How, can you see what I'm doing? Yes. Yep. I think that's, that's fine. And um, I am going to just try, uh, just so we can zoom in, I'm going to go ahead and just do a little zooming in here. Just just to, oh. now, unfortunately, we'll probably lose you, though. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, mean, just... I, can, I can move the camera closer, if that's easier. All right, let's just do this so we can see a little bit more close up. I hope, let me know out there if it ends up being a little bit too um, pixelated by getting that close. Otherwise, I can back up again. Yeah. Right, and we can do the manual zoom instead. <laughs> so, just, um, just... so I'm, I'm starting just by um, just by cutting around the outside shape of the spoon, and I try and to make things simpler. I try and break things down into its kind of individual small steps. Um, so if you kind of just look at a spoon and uh, oh well, I want to be there. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna back you out again. Bear with me. Um, saying it's getting a little, little bit grainy. So, we'll go back to where you were. Right, bring this over here a bit more. Okay. All right, there you go. Haha, <laughs> somebody says, ah, grainy, get it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got some comedians out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never have too many of those wood cones. So we're coming down the handle. Um, And I love this this technique with the knife. It's really gives me loads of control. Yeah. As well as pushing. Um, now it looks like I'm swapping knives, but it's actually the same knife. So this is my this is this is my carving knife. Oh. So this is. Uh, <laughs> This is my 106. It's the same, the same knife, mm -hmm. um, but it's been used quite a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Side by side. That's what. Uh... <laughs> That's just by, worn down <laughs> just by use and sharpening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's, that's a fair few years of sharpening that is. But this, this is the best knife. This is the best knife because okay. um, I can just. You see, uh, that really thin pointy bit, just for those concave curves, right. it just goes through so nicely. I think there's a bunch of people holding their breath um, <laughs> when they're watching you. <laughs> they're they're uh, concerned about... Me... <laughs> Go ahead. One of those things, kind of, um, uh, it, it's, it, can, it, can, it can be very unsafe. Uh, but there's a kind of so there's a there's a set of of safe knife grips that you can learn, right. um, which you can learn from from any any uh, teacher of uh, any carving spoon carving teacher would teach you. Um, or there's some great YouTube videos, um, and you learn this kind of set of safe knife techniques mm -hmm. and uh, touch wood. Um, then if you, once you know these safe, safe techniques, then you should be able to keep yourself safe. Right. Because uh, they've all kind of got that, that inbuilt safety. Um, so this cut here, there's kind of nowhere that can go. Uh, this isn't going to go any further mm -hmm. than I can push. Um, right, especially there's the, the big, big piece of wood basically stopping it from going any further. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody's asking, uh, where did where do you get your knives? Is there a place uh, where you sell it, or the or you can purchase it? Yeah. So uh, 
the great thing about these uh, one oh sixes is you can get them pretty much anywhere. Um, so pretty much any supplier of carving tools uh, will have these. Um, so so there's, there's obviously there's a, a lot of um, uh, uh, local local places. I'm I'm not sure. Um, in the UK, then uh, we stock them. Me, me, and my me and my dad have a tool company. Uh, we stock them. Uh, you can get them from Amazon if you do that sort of thing. Uh, and there's a handful of different retailers that all all stock them. It's the Moro 106. Is the one you want? Uh, and if you just plug that into Google, then you should find some somewhere close to you. I think. Uh, somebody mentioned you need a leather a leather bib. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so you can see here this this nice this pointy knife, really nice, getting in those little concave curves. Um, and I've just pretty much been just working on this shape, mm -hmm. getting this kind of nice and spoon shape. Yeah, that's here. a beautiful shape. Um, I'll, I'll sometimes dress this top surface a little bit at this point too. Uh, Notice all of her fingers are away from the blade. They're all on the other side of the the spoon. But yeah, just be very careful if you try this. <laughs> yeah, so the, the most common mistake with this one is uh, is this thumb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so bringing this knife over here, the important thing is keeping this knife upright. Mm -hmm. uh, people come over here and then suddenly they get this thumb. Um, but also like, um, if you if you can get to a class, get to a class, it is the best way of learning. Uh, just having that seeing seeing somebody do it in 3D definitely helps mm -hmm. uh, helps learn where to put those fingers. <laughs> um, what did you call the knife? Uh, so it's the 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 company is Mora, uh, M O R A. Okay. Um, and they're a, they're a Swedish company. They make loads of knives. So anybody who's kind of done bushcrafty type stuff mm -hmm. uh, will probably know them. Um, they do loads of really good value and really high quality knives. Um, and this particular uh, this particular knife is the 106. Okay. Uh, and um, another question is, is the English Sycamore a hardwood or soft? It's, it is, it's pretty, it's kind of, it's pretty hard. Um, it's, it's a hardwood, it's not a softwood. But it's also, I'm not sure, if, was the question like hard or two separate words or yeah, one word? Yeah, <laughs> that, that's always a question. Is it, is it, is it difficult or is it? <laughs> but the, <laughs> the, the thing is, um, uh, as it's green, it's actually a softer wood to carve. Yeah, um, yeah. It's much. So that's why, uh, yeah, that's why, why we go for the, why I carve it green mm -hmm. is because it's, but oh, geez, you're on the hands. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at kind of traditionally, then a lot of uh, a lot of woodworking in the olden days would have started with uh, at least done the starting bit of it would have been. Uh, but it seems, green. it seems like a very straight grain wood, which makes it easier to just let the knife follow along the grain. Yeah, yeah. And this bit as well, but yeah, sycamores are really nice, um, really nice and clean. Um, but I think uh, in terms of it's, it's it's a maple, and compared to your maples, uh, I don't think it's as hard as your hard maple. Okay. Uh, um, it's not like a really hard wood. It's just a quite hard wood. <laughs> um, so I've done this uh, so check. I've kind of just lightly dressed this top surface. And um, sometimes you'll find if this surface is a bit lumpy, then when you try and look at this shape, then these lumps on the top surface will kind of confuse your eye mm -hmm. and you, you're not quite sure what you're looking at. Um, 
So now I'm going to come and look at the back of my spoon. Um, and this is where I start putting facets on. Mm -hmm. um, and this is kind of my thing. Um, it's uh, this kind of textured yeah, thing. Yeah, wonderful. It's very, mm. it's very symmetrical. I mean, as as you go, I've been watching, and it's really important to make sure that as you're going, that you keep it symmetrical. If it starts going, um, you know, too much one side, too thick on one yeah. side, you really have to make sure before you go on to the next step that it's pretty even. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, or it's either that, or you've got to embrace the asymmetry. Mm. Or, uh, <laughs> yes, right. Make make it a deliberate choice. Uh, all right, so I'm going to come up to the back here now, um, and for the for the I'm going to put these start putting these facets in right from the start here with these rough shaping cuts, and I'm going to use this chest lever grip here. I'm kind of levering, mm -hmm. uh, which gives me a lot of power across quite a short cut, which is perfect for this. And so you see, I'm doing one, and then on each side. Now the important thing I found uh, in terms of pattern here yeah. um, is that you don't want one facet directly behind the, the, the previous one. So I'm going to start at the front, I'm going to work my way back wow. and each time I go back a, a row I'm just going to try and stagger it slightly off to one side or the other. So by, um, I'm looking at the positioning and you're really not needing to use much muscle when you're doing that. You're using leverage. Yeah, exactly. And that's what that's what all of these techniques are about. Yeah. Um, then it's not just about being safe. It's trying to trying to get the biggest muscles possible to do the job. Right. Uh, and um, and it is so much more about technique than strength. Because mm -hmm. um, I often get get. Um, uh, I, I, I teach kind of more uh, more women than some other teachers do, um, I find, because often I think um, uh, women feel like they maybe can't do it um, for whatever reason. Um, they, but, but usually because they think they're not strong enough. Um, uh, but... It's it's about so much more than than strength, you know. Mm. Um, you know, I'm 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 not a massively strong person, but I've got my technique really down, and I can probably carve a spoon as uh, faster than than most a lot of people who are stronger than me. Got all of these big levers. Mm -hmm. This grip sometimes called a chicken wings grip. Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Kids get really into this one as well. Uh, <laughs> great one to teach the kids. So how thick are you wanting that? What's what's the goal? Um, so I'm not worrying about thickness right now. So what I'm actually looking at is I'm looking at it uh, kind of this way, looking at it down here, yep. and I'm trying to get a kind of relatively even curve across here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, uh, at the back here, you see I've still got big flat surfaces, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to even those out into one soft curve. Uh, and I'm trying to get a soft curve this way, and also a kind of a soft curve this way. Um, but I'm also making it out of lots of little surfaces. That's the fun bit. So there's there's, think, a, there's a bunch of turtle fans here, so I think they're going to be able to <laughs> recognize that that's like the back of a turtle. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, or it sometimes gets uh, it gets it gets quite sort of honeycomb like as well. Sometimes it's really nice. Yeah, it's a lovely pattern. Um, but it's kind of that balancing act. You kind of want it to feel, uh, you, you don't want it to feel too, it wants to feel organic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hand carved. Yeah. And you don't want it to feel completely manufactured yeah. and completely regular. 
It's kind of like that when you're topping a pizza, I could describe it, right? So you want to scatter things randomly, but not too randomly. Right. <laughs> Ran <laughs> random chaos. <laughs> yeah. So we've got kind of, I can say I've kind of got uh, from here all the way back to about here. Yeah. But about here, I'm going to be turning it around and coming back down the other way to carve down the grain, down the handle right. here. So right at that point, that's where the top uh, top of the grain it's going to be, It's generally yeah. around about where this wide bit is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oops, you might want to bring it down just a little bit. There you go. There we go. There we go. Um, so I'm going to be turning it around there. And I'm going to come back this way. This bit in the middle is always the hardest to kind of try and work out. It's almost those transitional points. Mm -hmm. well, I think everybody's holding their breath again. <laughs> so this, this 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 is kind of really safe. I'm not pulling with this hand. Yeah. Um. So it's this push action. Right. Um. Uh. Which keeps me, and so I can only physically push it as far as my fingers will go. Right. Um. Which keeps it really nice and controlled. Um. This is kind of the 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 only one that that you'll find this grip here. Um. I, I sometimes do it here as well. And I've got various t-shirts that have got little holes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just the, it's just the pointy end of the tip of the knife that just catches. <laughs> right. And, and Barn, who is uh, quite a well-known spoon carver here in the UK, he always does this grip up here. Oh, hang on. Um, You're just off the screen there. Here. Yeah, there you go. Some people do it here, some up here. Uh -huh. um, I think it's a sightedness thing. How close you need to hold it to your face to be able to see it. Aye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but Barn, Barn always does it here, and he always has a woolly jumper which has got a hole in the. Uh... <laughs> 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 he, says, he, says, he says it so he can get to his breast pocket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not buying that. <laughs> So here I'm coming and I'm kind of turning it around and I'm going back to this bit here to put away and put on this handle. Now you can see here, my handle's getting a bit thin now actually, you can see here I've got the kind of the two surfaces mm -hmm. on. And this is actually where I sometimes use, um, I have recently sometimes been using my newer 106. Just because when you're carving uh, those big flat surfaces, then actually having a wider knife is helpful because it kind of runs along the, the bevels. Mm -hmm. It kind of runs along the surface a bit easier. And it's easier to get those planing surfaces. So that's kind of my two surfaces. I'm going to turn this into four because I want to make it nice and rounded. Um, and my third and fourth facets, we are going to come around this corner here. And they're going to come down here. Um, and I do this side with this grip here, pushing around here, and then I'll turn around the other one kind of pushing and you see here i'm using that tip of the knife again mm -hmm. to get through that. and then down here uh, do you do you ever design any designs sorry do you ever carve any designs into the handles uh yeah um not very often um, and I don't, and, um, and I don't do kind of any sort of, uh, um, not your kind of traditional 
carving. Um, but I've recently been doing, been very uh, inspired by Art Deco. So I went through a phase, uh, maybe, maybe a year or two ago, mm -hmm. um, by making making spoons with handles that were inspired. Where is it? It's my favourite spoon in the world. I just made it. I'm going to go find it one second. There we go. Right. Uh, so I'm really into Art Deco. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this is inspired by uh, my wedding ring. Yeah, back, back up just a little bit. It's, you can. You see? Oh yes. Yep. There you go. Okay. Um, nice. Very nice. Uh, which just that that kind of. Um, and so I've been doing, been kind of playing with more Art Deco yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you can picture that like a, a design above a window frame or something. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, yeah, but you see, I don't do so much of, some people do the kind of real, ornate, um, uh, stuff. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not so much of a decoration person. I, I really like the tool marks mm -hmm. is my favorite sort of decoration. Right. Um, now it definitely brings the, the human touch into it. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's like it's 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 that kind of that thing that that no machine will ever be able to replicate. Exactly. Uh, now they have machines that try to make it things look hand carved. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like the kind of you know, uh, I love that. You know, even if I was to make. 10 things, 10, 10 spoons in a set that were all the same, then they'd still have their own kind of yeah. characters. Uh, so is there a way, a, a place where people can purchase the spoons that you've made? Um, I, put, I sell them through my website. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I like carving spoons a lot more than I like photographing things and putting them up on my website. Um, so my kind of website updates are not massively frequent. Um, also, if you see something on my Instagram feed mm -hmm. that you want to buy, then just send me a message. Uh, or I've got a I've got a mailing list on my website. You can pop your name down for, and I'll send you an email when I have things. And so, so you do custom pieces? If people contact you? Uh, it depends what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do a massive amount of uh, commission work. Um, uh, but if somebody's got an idea of something, uh, then we'll, uh, just just kind of if it's uh, if it's a good fit, then then yeah, mm -hmm. then yeah, absolutely. Um, And somebody here just contacted somebody named Chris. For for those of you who don't know, Jojo is one of, if not the world's foremost spoon carver. <laughs> Do you know it's it's Chris N W. Yeah, hey Chris. <laughs> uh, Chris has been coming to our uh, our online carving clubs. Uh, A little while. Uh, so I'm kind of getting to that point now where where uh, this is something that I call the outside shape a rough finish. Yep. Um, so really I should stop fiddling around with it now and hollow out the bowl. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, 
Uh, somebody named Jim is asking about the online carving clubs. Yeah, so we've been for 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 other people who carve. Then we usually have a uh, real life carving club uh, in our workshop uh, every, twice a week. Um, but obviously, since the lockdown, then we haven't been able to meet. So we've taken our carving club online, um, and every Thursday evening, then we kind of open that up to anybody who wants to join in anywhere in the world as well. Is, is, there, a, nice. is there a website? Can anybody join on? Um, so that's on Zoom. Um, if you check out, so it's hosted by Path Carvers, which is my social aid surprise, where we uh, we try and help people with craft. Okay. Um, uh, so if you check out at Path Carvers on Instagram, uh, then we've got the Zoom details on there. Uh, and yeah, anybody's welcome to join in. Uh, 6.30 to 9 UK time. We can drop in any time. Um, and the details are part of this um, My workshop here is, is shared. It's, uh, it's a kind of, it's my space, but it's also the, the path part of this workshop too. So I'm just going to pull a chopping block over. Uh, we may just have to do a little adjustment again. Yeah, let me just adjust my screen here. Hold on. I'll rearrange you once I've grabbed all my tools. I'm going to want to come down here. Sorry for the bumpiness. Right. Okay. Uh, how's that? Yep. No, that's good. Like nice and centered. Cool. So um, this is uh, this is my ads. Uh, you may have come across these before. Um, yeah. This is quite a small one. Um, I use a, a hand size from fifty mil as well. Um, uh, just whichever one, kind of depending on whichever one I grab first. Um, and this basically just makes the hollowing process a lot quicker. So I'm going to use this. I'm sorry for the noise. This might be a bit rattly. And just the important thing to remember when you're adding is always do this one first. Okay. If you do this one first, Jojo, can you, you can, uh, can you just hold on one second? There's the, it seems like there's a bunch of buffering happening, so let's wait for. It. Sometimes it just has to kind of cycle through. So okay. bear with me. I'm just okay, gonna let me know when it's good to go. Okay, I, I think it's better now. So yeah, there's just a few a few seconds there of buffering. So you want to show that again? Good. Yeah. yeah. So just the most important thing to remember when you're adding is always come this way first and then this way. Because if you come this way first, then you'll find you'll pop the front of your spoon off. That just seems like a massive overkill for the tool, but it's doing a great <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, so it's all about making life easier for yourself. Um, and this is just going to make hollowing that out so much easier. So that's about as much as I do with this. Um, and now there's a question. Are you barefoot? <laughs> and how often yeah. do you get splinters in your feet? <laughs> Uh, I am barefoot, and I don't think I have ever gotten a splinter in my feet. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, um, uh, these like wood chips from uh, where you've cut them yeah. rather than sawn them, very they're, they're not splintery really at all. Um, you mostly get splinters when you've kind of sawn something and you get all that, like, that tear out. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> I'd be concerned <laughs> about dropping tools. Yeah, you, you get very fast reflexes. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just going to readjust the, the camera so you can see the spoon knife again. Going up, up, up again. Yeah. Okay, hold, hold on. Before you get going on the next one, I'm, I've got to wait a bit because the uh, screen is pixelating a little bit. And it's, you know, it could be just the fact that it's uh, internet, but it seems to uh, go away after a few seconds. I'm just waiting for it to bear with me, everybody. Um, here, let's an answer some questions while we've. Um, what's the yeah, largest cool. size spoon you have carved? Uh... Oh, I carved, um, I carved actually a, a commission for a friend who, um, uh, uh, there's a book series um, where apparently one of the characters has a battle ladle, uh, a ladle that's carried into battle. Um, and she needed a battle ladle for her, her book gathering. Um, so I made a, I don't know, it must have been, it was, it was pretty, I can't get far enough away. This, it must have been like this sort of size. <laughs> out, um, of, out of a huge log. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but the, kind of the, the biggest, uh, I, I tend to go small rather than going big. Right. Um, the kind of, the biggest things I've carved tend to be kind of more, you know, big cooking spoons and layers and stuff. I'm more of a fan of going small. Oh, that's so adorable. <laughs> 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 All right. Oops. Oh, bear, bear with me. It's gone pixelating one more time. We're just going to have to wait for that to get through. Um, yeah, it's just the something that we have to deal with every once in a while with the internet. Um, yeah. But so. Well, I think there's quite a lot of people using it at the minute. Yeah. Okay, I think come back, come back. All right, now we're back. Okay. Go. Cool. Let's do some hauling. Um so now we go on to the curved knife. Now this is a really dangerous one. Hmm. Uh, have blades on both sides? No, just the one. Just the one. Uh, but you do get them that have blades on both sides, and they're really dangerous. Mm. Um, be careful with those. Um, uh, and so I'm going to be using a kind of levering action with this again. This is okay. kind of similar to that that grip that everybody was wincing about earlier. Yeah, with well, a straight I, can, I can see why that would be an issue if the blade if there are blades on both sides. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so you see. Just having that little hollow already started uh, from the ads, uh, it just makes this so much easier. Yeah. And so I'm just kind of, I've got this kind of pivoting action here as well, and which kind of gives me all that leverage. Nice long handle. And really, I'm just kind of cleaning it up. And then I'll come back this way. Now, there's obviously a right-handed and a left-handed. Yes. I yeah. Um, I think that's why the double-edged was originally created, because it meant that... Um, yeah, but you can't press on it. And the left, yes. Um... And so this spoon knife, this is designed by uh, me and my, and uh, made by me and my dad in Sheffield. Oh. Uh, these are our knives. And you, you sell those on your website? Uh, so our tool website is woodtools, wood-tools.co.uk. Okay. Um, but we're not shipping out at the minute um, because of the whole COVID thing. Oh, okay, okay. 
Uh, oh, but you can also you can also get them through Lee Nielsen in the states. Okay, uh, they stop them. Um, uh, somebody's commenting on your shirt. Love your shirt. Where did you get it? Um, uh, it it's a replica Vivian Westwood, actually. Uh, but uh, I don't have that good taste. It's my partner. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't wearing it anymore. So do you ever just get lost in what you're doing and sort of yeah. forget, forget what time it is and <laughs> Oh absolutely, yeah. No, there's something quite magical about making wood chips, I think. Oh, yeah. um, uh, just the world kind of disappears. And that's what we kind of try and do with, with, with path carvers, our social enterprise. Um, so, um, uh, because it is so good for you, it's so, so, so therapeutic and can really help um, a lot of uh, particularly mental health problems. Mm -hmm. um, just having that bit of time, but also uh, a lot. So many people never get to experience it. Um, uh, there's a lot of people who don't ever come across wood carving as a as an option, or maybe they kind of they come across it, but but they don't have the. You've got to have a certain amount of of money and time to be able to get into it. Mm -hmm. um, well, what's nice about what you're doing is they're actually they're actual functional. You can actually use them. Yeah. You can give them as gifts. You can, you know. Yeah, they're, exactly. They're not so you kind of got all of these different things. Yeah, all of these different things that make you feel good. So you've got the actual act of making, and almost you you don't even need to make anything in particular. You can just sit there and, and make wood chips, mm -hmm. uh, just whittle away on a stick, um, and the kind of just just time disappears. And then, and then to have at the end something that you made with your hands mm -hmm. that you could then use in your kitchen. Um, it's amazing. So you can see how I've uh, I've been carving. So I'll come down this way, uh, and then I'll come down this way, and then uh, to tidy it up in the middle, then I'll just come straight across, um, straight across the middle here, mm -hmm. and this is. This is the dangerous one. Mm -hmm. uh, don't try this at home. Uh, this is the one that you come all the way across, and this thumb has a nasty little habit of trying to come and rest itself up on this edge. Right. So you can through and into that thumb. Don't do that. <laughs> but the spoon knife particularly, I'm sure you must find that with... Uh, 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 chisels as well. I mean, hopefully not, but the, the kind of the, 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 you could take out kind of the, the cut from straight knives are much safer and easier to put back together than from the curved things. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just watching what you're doing there. There's that sort of area where you have to go, um, across the grain, um, uh, that yeah. says final cut because you hit basically where the grain switches. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I go over that a lot with my carving because you end up, whenever you create a hole in anything, you create that yeah. area where it just gets it's very, very hard to clean out. So you have to come across yeah. the grain to do that slicing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of, I've got the first hollow. I don't usually worry about it too much. Um, it's kind of a rough shaping, um, and what it's going to do is going to make this top surface much easier for me to carve. Right. Um, oh, that's but beautiful. also, I do get a bit carried away. Yeah, that's yeah. that really is lovely. And then, so um, do you sharpen the edge, or? So what I'm going to do, um, I don't do too much work on the top surface before I put the hollow in, mm -hmm. because it's just so much easier. To do that top surface once you've got rid of all this inside bit here yeah and when you've got a whole big flat surface then cutting here is is a nightmare but now i'm only cutting this really thin edge here okay. um so now what i'm going to do 
uh, is I'm looking at these edges here um, and I'm going, oh, I've got too much on that edge there. Mm -hmm. This edge is better, but what I can do is I can bring this bit down some more. And what that does, can you see I've got this kind of curve to the top surface here? Now this curve is what is known to spoon carvers as crank. Uh, and um, it's effectively what means you can get food out of the bottom of a bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, because this bit comes up over the handle and that scoops the stuff up and holds it in. Whereas if this was flat, then all the food would fall right. at the end. Um, so, uh, I'm going to cut some more off the top surface here. Uh, and I'm going to do this. See that? Nice cut there. See how e much easier that is going through just that thin edge there. And this is why I don't worry too much about the shape of my hollow to start with, because mm. I'm going to change it. Because you can see there, that edge was really thin, but obviously when you cut through it, it changes and it will change the shape as well. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't too worried about my my shape with the first hollow. Going through here. And then down the handle as well, this cut here can now come off. I'll cut that a little off there. Nice and easy. Um, now when you cut through this top surface, then it'll always kind of change this outside shape a bit as well. Um, just because these surfaces here are never completely flat and straight and upright and true. Um, so as you cut down through them, then you kind of go down to whatever was behind. Uh, and this is, this is kind of the point where I would call a spoon part finished. And often at this point, then I'll put it down and I'll leave it overnight before doing the finishing cuts. Um, so just to yeah. just for it to dry a little bit more or or just to step so, away from it? Yeah, both. Um, I mean, I'm sure you must find that too, that, that kind of actually that time away from stuff. I think it's something that, that must, must, there must be a lot of crossover that actually you put something down for a bit, you come back to it and it looks completely different. Oh, definitely. In fact, if you're watching yesterday's, if anybody was watching yesterday's live stream, it was uh, not one of the smoother running ones. <laughs> so yes, I just yeah. had to get away. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you've just got to stop. Mm -hmm. I have bad spoon days. Uh, yep. Walk um, away, yeah. look at something different, go for yeah. a walk. <laughs> yeah. And oftentimes you think everything's, you think it's the worst thing ever, yeah. and then you put it down, and just whatever you do, it won't, won't go right. right. And then finally you put it down, you come back to it the next day, and you're like, I don't know what the problem was, it looks fine. <laughs> yeah, no, there's there's definitely something, sometimes it's just not there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's good to be able to recognize that, though. Mm. Really important, I think. Sometimes I try to push through and then that's always a mistake when you're like, oh no, I should have just stopped. Yeah. I should have listened to that little voice in my head. <laughs> yeah. Walk away. Um, cool. And so I'll often, actually when I'm carving, I'll have uh, two or three spoons on the go at once. Mm -hmm. um, or, or, or maybe even more. So I'll, I'll work in little batches um, and I'll do the kind of rough shaping on all of them. Uh, and I'll kind of just do each step, step by step on on the whole, on all of them, rather than running one from start to finish. Because um, that way um, uh, you know that you need to put this piece down you know there's something not quite right with it but you can't work out what but you don't have to stop carving completely mm -hmm. um, so I'll put that thing down go and carve something else and come back to it um, question how do you sharpen the hook knife um, top or bottom bevel uh, so I do most of the sharpening on the outside uh, and then I'll just touch it up on in the inside 
uh, at, at the end to get rid of the burr on the inside. And I'll just use a, a dowel with either some really fine paper wrapped around it or just some, some polishing compound, depending on how much it needs. Okay. But yeah, they're, they're fiddly little things. Um, watch some YouTube videos. There's some really good YouTube videos if anybody's struggling. Because um, then you can have it like right there in front of you and follow along with it. But also, kind of in a way, they're almost easier. Because uh, whereas with your, your slide knife, then you've got to keep that bevel dead flat um, because it's kind of acting as your jig. Uh, whereas with a, a spoon knife, then it's actually a curved bevel. Um, which in a way is easier because you don't have to worry about keeping it dead flat, which is often the thing that's hardest when you're first learning to sharpen. So that one, the one that you're holding there has two bevels. It's just, it's... Yeah, so this is a Scandi grind. Okay. And uh, same, uh, same on the other side? Flat. And yes, yeah. a flat bevel there as well. Okay. Um... Yeah, we're starting to get there now. Um, so I've tickled up this top surface here. And here is kind of just a bit of going round in circles. So I'll do a bit to this surface. And then from there, I'll have to do a bit to the outside surface. And then from there, I might do a bit to the top surface again. And then you'll kind of bounce it backwards and forwards. And then it's kind of just a matter of finding out. At some point, you've got to say that's enough. <laughs> that's the big question is how do you know when? <laughs> I have that yeah. asked, asked yeah. a lot to me. Yeah, and you can go on forever. Yeah. And I think that's one of the one of the hardest things to learn. And one of the things that kind of... And I, it's one of the things that never goes away as well. Yeah. Kind of, You always want to do just a bit more. <laughs> and I'm just tidying up my end here. Uh, so um, it was still kind of a messy saw cut um, and I'm just cutting through gently smoothing that off because uh, getting rid of the the saw cut um, and uh, it's just gone for a, just a subtle you know, yeah. you know, just a really subtle curve it's a lovely shape everything about it is Oh, thank you. Um, uh, 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 yeah, there's, there's, there's just something about spoons, I think, that kind of, um, that's really, there's so much you can do with a spoon. Mm. Uh, and you don't need, you don't need masses of materials or, or tools or space. Although, uh, you had, you had Fallon's Beyond, Peter Fallon's Beyond. Last week, was it? The week before? He says it's the, the, the biggest lie of spoon carving, that you only need three tools. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. You only need one axe, one knife, and one spoon knife. Right. And that's kind of the... Uh... Oh, unfortunately, it looks like we're getting the pixelated again. Um... Oh, what a pain. Yes. I don't know why that's doing that, but, um, you know, I think it, well, basically because we're Skype and then Skype into a program and then program into the live stream. And yeah. somewhere along the way, it just has, says, no, too much information. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you seal the wood with? Uh, good question. Um, depends what I'm going to do with it. Um, if I'm just using it at home, or if it, uh, especially if it's a cooking spoon, then often I don't even don't seal it at all. I'll just use it, um, and they kind of build up a pattern of age, um, and they'll pick up oils from whatever you're eating or cooking. Um, if I'm doing something to sell, uh, then I kind of want it to look as new as possible for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, so I will oil them and I want something, I know there's a lot of kind of, uh, things you can, oils that you can buy from the hardware store, store save as food safe. Um, but they've got like these massive long lists of chemicals and it's like, 
I'm not sure I'd want to eat that. So I, I like going for a, a kind of a salad, something that I'd put on my food. Um, so I'll go for a salad grade oil. Um, and then I want something that's going to set. Uh, so some oils, like your olive oil, uh, if they're hanging around for too long, uh, we'll just go sticky and rancid. Yeah, I think what you can find just at a standard um, uh, department or um, hardware store around here um, is um, cutting board oil. So anything uh -huh. that you could use on a cutting board, you could probably use. I think it's just a, a combination of oils. So I would imagine yeah. that would probably well, work too. Find, uh, your cutting board oil it's, is largely mineral oil. Okay, um, you want to probably um, want to bring that down just a little bit. You're sort of getting right off screen. There you go. <laughs> Can you see me again now? Yep. There you go. You're back. Excellent. Um, so I like I like uh, particularly I like um, uh, linseed oil, which is also sold as flaxseed oil um, or walnut oil. Um, are my favourites. Uh, walnut oil is particularly good. You can get that at most kind of as a salad oil. Um, and, and, and there's flax. Flax is getting more popular now as well. And you can get that, um, you can get that just in the, next to the, the a salad dressing. Um, you, you're talking, you can just simply use the, the flax oil? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, yeah, really nice. Wow. Um, that's I use I use linseed on most of my things. Uh, cool. So you see the can you see the top of the handle? Yes. Yeah, I've kind of slight pitch. Yeah. Um, and that just 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 really makes it feel nice and comfortable in your thumb there. That's um, cool. Now I've kind of fiddled around with the outside, and I've got that to where I'm about happy with it. I'm going to come back into this hollow now, mm -hmm. um, and what I'm going to try and do. Uh, is I'm going to try and make this edge an approximately even thickness all around. So you can see I've currently got a really thick edge here, and it's thinner over here. And I'm just going to take it down to a millimetre or two, okay. uh, which is probably some ridiculously small fraction of an inch. Uh, <laughs> Somebody should mention mineral oil is food safe. So... Yeah. yeah, yeah. So mineral oil is is obviously fine, uh, but it, it doesn't ever set, um, so it just kind of stays inert forever. So it will wash out, um, and you'll just need to reapply it, um, kind of periodically. Um, whereas if you use a, a linseed or a, a flaxseed or a walnut, then they all polymerize, they all set and go off. Um, and then won't wash out and we'll keep it looking really nice and clean for ages but also it just depends what you want want because um i really love how spoons kind of develop a, a pattern of use um, and if you're just making things for yourself then there's really no need to you don't need to oil them and they'll kind of just uh they'll um get that kind of used, nice used aged wood look faster. Mm -hmm. So you see here, I'm kind of, I'm coming around this edge. This is where this grip's really good. So get that edge down thinner. And I'm not taking it to a complete sharp edge because I actually don't want it to be really sharp in, in those sort of corners of your mouth. Right. Um, so I'm leaving a little flat surface there, but just kind of a millimeter or two. And around this side too. Um, if, you, if you do put on, if you do put on a, an oil, um, does it change the color of that? Do you know with the sycamore? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the sycamore is obviously really pale, and any oil you put on it will kind of darken the wood, um, uh, and often uh, give it kind of warmer tones. Mm -hmm. um, so it will kind of end up sort of yellower. Nice. Uh, obviously to varying 
levels depending on the depending on the the oil. Um, and I'm just you know, I'm just feeling in here all the time um, because at this stage then um, you can't kind of visually see as much what you're working on. So I'm just finding the lumps and taking little cuts off. Yeah, that's when when I carve, I like to use uh, fingerless gloves, you know, that are cut right at yeah. the and so yeah. I can actually feel it because there's so many things that you can discover just from touch rather than seeing. Sometimes yeah, maybe absolutely. the light's not good or yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So I'm fairly happy with the front there. You see, I've got these two edges now are much thinner. Uh huh. So I'm just going to come down from the back. And this one, I always rest it on my knee. Uh, just gives me a bit more support there. And I like to do my finishing cuts kind of along the grain as much as I can. Because I do find you get that kind of slightly smoother surface compared to across the grain. Now there's a question. Have you ever cut all the way through? Try to get it so thin? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's a phase that anyone who's carved a spoon can relate to. <laughs> you, it, you tend to chasing that really thin mm -hmm. or, or it's not even chasing the thinness, you're chasing that kind of perfectly smooth bowl and you just keep taking off a bit more a bit more a bit more <laughs> and then and then if you're lucky then you notice that you can see light through it first right uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but if not then you first become aware uh, when you uh, put a hole in it Um, so, like I said, I try and, uh, so if I'd left this to dry, then I might be able to get this, this kind of finished in this, uh, the point where the, the grain is changing direction, right. uh, all along the grain, I might get those two cuts to meet up, um, without having to go across the grain, mm -hmm. which I always find just a tiny bit rougher mm. not quite as smooth um but because this is still a little bit green then i will use that cross cut um and i might come back to it tomorrow or the day after when it's a bit drier and just go back into that bowl um and here you can fiddle around as well if you're taking a little bit too much off i think this edge might be a little bit too thin now so i will go back again just so that's straight nice <laughs> Um, and take just a tiny, tiny little, <laughs> we're talking like hair thin. Like I said, it's like cutting your hair just a little bit more off the side. <laughs> <laughs> just get it really neat, because it's actually, it's much easier to get this edge neat with the straight knife than it is with the, the curved knife. So I get it kind of 90 something percent there with the curved knife and then just finish it up with the straight knife. Um, so we're really nearly finished now. What I'll do after I've got this bowl here sorted, I'm not working out the thickness of the bowl like this with the spoon knife, because like I said, it's much easier to work out with the straight knife. Um, I don't want to go too deep in here, sure. uh, obviously, but other than that, I'm not worrying about the thickness. Um, what I'm concerned about with the, the a spoon knife is just getting a really nice shallow curve um it's another thing that people tend to commonly do when they start carving spoons is they try and dig this hole really really deep right. um, but actually if you think about it you only want this curve to be kind of the curve of your top lip because you want your top lip to be able to run through that right. nice and comfortably and scrape all the food off of it so if that's really really deep you're not going to be able to get the food out of it um so I've just got a nice shallow, even curve across there. Um, and then I'll come onto the back and I'll just worry about the thickness there. So what I'm feeling is it's feeling nice at the back here, 
but it's a little bit thick at the front here. Mm -hmm. And again, just you, you can't tell that any other way than you're feeling it. Um, and um, so I'm going to thin the front a little. What, what happens? And um, there's some questions about when the uh, the green wood starts to dry. Do you have any issues with yeah. um, either the the wood splits, or uh, are you expecting any kind of changes? Um, not really. So because this is quite a small piece of quite a large log, and I've carved it really quite thin, um, then it's probably not going to split when it moves when it dries. If I if I had if it was if it was if I had some really thick parts left um, and it dried really quick, or if it was a more if it was if it was apple uh, or or a wood that is just really splitty, then you might see some splits in the thicker bits. Um, generally, if you have a split in a spoon, it's because a split was there already. So you see splits running in from this end here, mm -hmm. which is from the end of the log. The split was there already. You just didn't notice it, mm -hmm. and then as it dries, it opens up or in the end of the handle is the other one. And then the other common split in a spoon is in here at the back of the neck, which is when you're axing, you ax down here and you accidentally stick the ax in there. Um, and then I, another thing that anybody who's carved a spoon will probably relate to is you hit stick the ax in there a bit too hard mm. and you've suddenly only got half a spoon left. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure which is more cruel actually. Either you stick the ax in here and you've got half a spoon left or you put these invisible splits in and then you spend two days of love and care into this spoon and then it dries out and then it splits. <laughs> Oh, just the, the splits open up as it dries. Yeah. Well, um, and then the, the sycamore is really quite stable, so it's probably not going to move much. You sometimes get fruit woods will kind of, they'll twist along this way, and you'll get, it'll twist right. a lot. Right. Um, Which can create an interesting shaped uh, spoon at, after that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they're quite organic things anyway. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. And so as I'm coming in here, then I'm, I'm, I'm again working into my facets. And this at this point, then I'll sometimes tidy them up as well, a little, just with a little thumb push cut. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of one of those things, actually, that often I find I'll go and tidy them up and then I think, oh, that's not quite where I want it. And I'll try and push it one way or another. Mm -hmm. And then I look back at it and it's it's just, it's horrible. I hate <laughs> it. Uh, and I wish I'd left it alone. I've just realised the, the time. We've, we've been going on a bit, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm, oh, people are still out there. Though. <laughs> but I didn't want to <laughs> stop here. I wanted to, to make sure we got through the whole process. <laughs> Are there any other uh, last minute questions out there? Anybody have any questions? Um, oh, anybody? So, uh, it's kind of come quite, uh, we are actually right near the very end. Um, I've got my last little finishing touches, uh -huh. uh, which is just going to be the very edges. Um, and Here's my little haircut oh, again. Make, make sure you go a little bit lower. I can't get rid right off the screen. Right. There you go. Can you hear? There you go. Now I'm going to come down. You. Yeah. Ooh, look at that curl. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love it. <laughs> this, is the, uh, yes. this is the Instagram shot. <laughs> <laughs> a successful cut. I love it. <laughs> Uh, let's see if I can do the other one as well. It's the little things in life. <laughs> this is the nice thing about about this kind of thing, and uh, usually this is the stuff that I just do on my own in my workshop. And ah, oh, I stretched it out. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I collect those when I get them. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, and then just around the, the edge of the bowl as well. These ones don't make such nice curls. <laughs> Not quite as satisfying. Um, but just, just going through and taking off those sharp edges.
So a question is, so would this be hard for a person with weak hands? Um, if you if you were watching earlier, we were talking a lot about leverage. Um, yeah. So it does require some strength, but not as much as you think. Yeah, absolutely. All of these rips that I'm doing, they're all a lot more about technique than they are about strength. Um, so it, you know, when I'm doing this, then then it's these it's these it's the, I've got the leverage of the whole arm. And it's using the big big muscles in in your back. Um, and here, kind of, you've got both hands working together. Um, so here I'm just actually doing a tiny little cut around the inside edge of the bowl as well. To do on. So really just ta just uh, taking off the sharp corners. Yeah, just softening it. Yeah. But, but yeah, anybody really, um, you'll probably, the thing is that um, if you're stronger, then when you start doing something like this, then you'll you'll probably uh, find it easier to start with because you probably won't get as tired as quickly. Um, and when you don't know the technique, you can kind of brute force it. Mm -hmm. um, it's but it's not it's going to wear you out more quickly. And and it, and and so often I'll find that at the start of a class, then there's kind of some people who who are finding it much easier. Um, people who who are a bit physically stronger. Um, or, or more importantly, who have done more things with their hands, mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily, you know, woodwork. Um, often people, you know, if you've done yoga or Tai Chi or something, and you're quite aware of your body, you find that helps a lot. Um, I would imagine the, the whole brute force, um, it, it can also be dangerous too. Yeah. You're relying yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you'll find that kind of by the end of the class, then actually often the people who don't have as much strength are the people who, who pick the technique up quicker. Mm -hmm. um, because when you can't just brute force it, then you have to work out the technique. Mm -hmm. um, and it will be, you know, it will be difficult to start. It's difficult for everyone to start with, you know. Even the strongest of person will be tired at the end of a, the first day carving because you get all that tension oh yeah is the tension wears you out most um uh the kind of that like, really tense um yeah I think we're about done what a lovely shaped spoon it's beautiful <laughs> mm -hmm. that's beautiful well why don't you um uh, adjust the camera we can say goodbye because i think i'm gonna um yeah we'll get get your face in there again <laughs> And I'll come back. Hello. <laughs> Love everybody. <Hey. laughs> well, thank you very much. That was fascinating. I honestly have never sat and watched somebody make a spoon before. And the the <laughs> the tools and everything and that was all just amazing work. So next time you come to the States, I really want to um I want to meet you in person. I haven't met you in person, yeah, but absolutely. at some point maybe if you're teaching up at oh, Roy Underhills. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, or when you make it over here to the UK. Yes, hopefully in October. We'll have first. Yep. <laughs> Ho hopefully I'll be there, over there in uh, in October for the Grinling Gibbons tour. Um, make it up to Birmingham and say hi. And we'll, I'll, yeah, uh, maybe I'll try carving a spoon up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, let me yeah, just... Hopefully when all this is over, then we can all get together and carve together again. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let me just see if there's any quick uh, questions. Um, another great session. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Everybody is very appreciative. I'll send I'll send you uh, a list of the messages people are saying. <laughs> oh, cool, nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Well, it's so good to, yeah. to meet you through Skype, and I hope to see you yeah. sometime soon. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me, um, and thanks to everybody for sitting and watching and. Uh, listening to me talk about spoons. No, <laughs> that's wonderful. Now, if any of you, um, if you missed the first part of it, you can always watch the, um, oh, I have my cat here sneezing. Um, <laughs> if you missed the first part, you can always watch it again. It will be on the archived videos of my uh, Twitch. But, well, thank you again. And it's been a pleasure. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, be be Great safe weekend. be safe in the uk over there yeah 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 you too all right uh
Yeah. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, there we go. She's okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you everybody for sticking around. That was really, really fascinating. Um, talk about some <laughs> different tools that I was not familiar with. Um, all right. Well, thank you again for joining me tomorrow. I'm going to be back carving Lady Jane. Um, yes. And uh, so again, that was a lot of fun. And again, if you missed the first part of it or missed part of it, or if you want to watch it again, um, it'll be in the archived videos. And um, yes. So thank you again. We'll see you um, see you tomorrow, hopefully. All right. Happy carving, everybody.